waiting for my AC to turn off to start. <laughs> Welcome to this week's video. It's kind of crazy that I'm even doing this because I feel like so much time has passed. I'm doing it for several reasons. One, I never got the chance to because during that time, emotions were like so heightened. Being single, newly dumped, I don't know. It just was a hard time. I want to document it because it really was such a beautiful time in my life. And I feel like as I get older, as more time passes, I'm going to forget more and more, but it was such a spiritual, special time in my life. I am going to go back to when I found out I was pregnant. I had a feeling like I just genuinely, like I was laying down one day and my stomach just felt like it, it felt different. Like it felt like it was cooking something up. Like I don't know how to explain it, but I knew something was going on and I was dating my ex-boyfriend at the time. I expressed to him that I thought I could be pregnant. He just said, okay, we'll get through this. I was so broke also, by the way. So I didn't like pay for like early pregnancy tests. I think I finally got up the nerve to buy pregnancy tests and I wanted a few because I needed like for sure validation. I ended up buying ovulation tests. I got home, I was like, Ov what? Like, is this even gonna work the same? I took the test and it was positive. So am I ovulating or am I somehow pregnant? I took multiple of those and they all came back positive. But I was like, oh, I guess it's like the same day I could just be ovulating. I did go to the Dollar Tree and I bought like the Dollar pregnancy test and that came up faint. And I don't know if I can trust this Dollar Tree pregnancy test because in my mind I was like, it's just a dollar. Is it really valid? Is it something I can trust? Turns out it was. And then I did Google if um, a ovulation test could act as a pregnancy test and let you know that you're pregnant. And that is also true. So <laughs> if you want a bunch of pregnancy tests, you could also get ovulation tests. I had a lot of emotions, but I feel like I had to kind of push them all down so that nothing could come up to the surface. My boyfriend at the time came down to visit me. We are trying to figure everything out. I wasn't married. I grew up in a religious household and just having a baby out of wedlock was not really cool or accepted. I'm not that it wasn't accepted, but we went to the doctor together and I had told my mom and I think my mom just like I don't know, I need to ask her, but I'm pretty sure she just like did not believe me. Us three went to the doctor. It was so awkward and they tested me and they said I was pregnant. And my mom was also like, oh, you're also getting like an STD test. She just like did not trust my boyfriend at the time. She just didn't like him. Like everybody was trying to process it. My boyfriend at the time was trying to figure out um, his job. He did summer sales and didn't know if he was gonna do sales where I was living at the time, which was the Bay Area or somewhere else. I, we had like a family meeting with my dad, my mom, me and him. My parents were like, okay, you guys are gonna get married. We're gonna figure this out. And we had talked about that previously too. So we, I thought we're on the same page about that until he just said during that meeting, which was like the first time I was hearing it too, that he could not do it. He could not marry me. I think it was a lot for him. I mean, it was a lot for all of us. He did say he does not want to be a part of my life, a part of the baby's life. So that's just kind of where I left it and I just accepted it. I was completely heartbroken. I was extremely depressed at first. Was not sure if I could be the best parent, um, especially doing it alone. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> the first time in my life I did not want to make a decision based on what's best for me um going to make the best decision for somebody else who hadn't even come into the world yet and I think part of me was even like is there is it possible for her to come into the world because I think I had heard a lot about like miscarriages and like you emotionally have to be well and like you're stressed, the baby can feel it and all these things and it was the hardest time in my life. Um, I didn't even know if I wanted to live 
but I knew I had to keep myself well enough and mentally strong enough to get the baby into this world and whatever the best decision was for it. I was thinking about that a lot. I was praying so much um, because I a thousand percent believe in a God, in source, in like whatever you want to call it, the universe. I feel like it for me is so real and I knew it would guide me to the right decision. And so I kept asking like, I genuinely just want to do the right thing. Whatever it is, I will do it. And I remember I was in bed and I don't know if I was waking up or going to sleep, but I remember I felt the answer. And I felt like the answer was she was mine, she was my grace. And at the time, I didn't even know if it was girl. A few weeks after, I was probably, because I think I, I found out she was girl at 20 weeks. Um, but uh, I shared that experience with my parents and I knew I wanted to move forward and I was going to keep her. I was going to raise her as a single mom. <laughs> oh my God. And I knew that if that was the answer, that was the best thing for her, that I was the best thing for her, which I just had to be like, okay, like you are the best thing for her. So get your act together, <laughs> essentially is the pep talk I gave myself. Get yourself good, you know, like work on yourself right now and be prepared for when she comes. And I just knew when she would come, everything would be okay. And so um, that was like my main focus. Um, but I still was struggling because obviously I was dumped and I had recently gotten fired from my job because I took two days off in a row trying to figure out, that, I mean, no one knew I was pregnant and so they let me go. And so I had to figure out what I was gonna do for a job. I was trying to figure out so many moving parts and ultimately I decided along with my parents that I was, wasn't gonna work um, I was going to put too much stress on myself. I could only take on so much. Um, and I'm so grateful for my parents who supported me, let me live at their house, rent free, and fully supported me and was my full support system at the time. Um, and I think there was a period of time that I downloaded Tinder and <laughs> was lonely and just needed some validation from strangers apparently. I was just trying to find ways to cope, honestly. And this guy messaged me, which is my now boyfriend, um, messaged me and he was the only person I went on a date with. And I went on a date with him and it was fun. And he wanted to go on another date, but I told him like, I have so much going on and I don't want to drag you into it. it didn't go any further. Um, but in the back, I was always in the back of his mind and um we kind of just i think we followed each other on instagram and kind of just moved on the rest of my pregnancy it was very emotional i was super hormonal but and i'm sure my my family just took the brunt of it uh, i know they took the brunt of it um dealing with all of my hormones and emotions and just everything i was going through um it was such a beautiful time to like connect with myself and to uh, build up my self-esteem because I think before in that relationship I was in before I think I I did a lot of damage to myself and just thinking I was not good enough and um when I feel like I was going through that period of time I was like no I am good enough I am worthy of all the good things that this world has to offer I am worthy of this beautiful baby and I'm gonna be a great mom and that was like it and so the pregnancy itself was fairly easy I remember I was super sick in my first trimester second trimester amazing third trimester awful I had some round ligament pain and it was kind of hard to sleep but besides that I feel like I was really lucky in having just a pretty good 
um, overall pregnancy. I think I gained only about 22 pounds. I was trying to eat so much. I was eating whatever I wanted. And um, I think Grace was also just a really tiny baby and I'm pretty petite, but I remember at my 35 week checkup is when they said, oh, it's a little bit concerning that she's not really growing more. Um, and so they were going to uh, schedule an induction um, when I was 37 weeks, which is full term. So we went ahead and scheduled that. I was completely freaking out. I finished Grace's little nursery in my parents' house, which was right next to my room. I absolutely loved it. I spent like all the money I had, had the best baby shower that my best friend from California threw me and like her family and like my mom's friends. Cause we're like all, we're all just so close. And at the overwhelming feeling of love, I had and my ex-boyfriend's family came to that baby shower too to show their support which I really appreciated um and they got me so much too like I genuinely felt so loved and supported and felt like I like it, it just you know when like you just feel like everything is falling into place because it's the right thing. That's exactly how I felt. With so many people in my corner, I just knew I could move forward. Also during this time, one of my mom's friends, I was like kind of working for her. I was pretty much just running her errands and picking her kids up from school. And I feel like that gave me something to do and took my mind off it. And I will forever be grateful to Jackie Schofield and all of her kids for just giving me that distraction. I was able to make some extra cash and it was just such a blessing. Not only that, but like I made so many new friends during that summer period. So crazy how life works when you're being intentional and you really just like have the good vibes and energy flowing. It was like one of the best summers of my life. I had the best like family and like I was making these new friends that we just would always hang out together. And I do not know what I would have done without them. Like there's so like looking back, there's so many moving pieces. Like it's so divine. And I'm sharing this not to like push any sort of beliefs on anybody at all. I am genuinely just sharing what helped me my belief system that helped me through that time and that still helped me to this day i would never want anybody to feel like i was being any type of way especially coming from such a strong religious background where people were super judgy i have no judgment at all i was super humbled by everybody that was in my corner and just that time in my life. Now it's, I think the next day was my induction day. I was so nervous. I had no idea what was going to happen. I think the last couple of weeks I would have these panic attacks of like, how is she going to get out of me? Like, there's no way, there's no way out. Like I can't turn back now and be like, no, I don't want to give birth. I'm scared. Be not because I didn't want her, but because like the birth, that whole process just was terrifying. The day came and I was on Pitocin, I was on a lot of different things. And I just remember there was people, the first day I was like, okay, let's stay positive, let's stay positive. Like it was a long day and it wasn't painful. Um, I was having contractions, but I didn't feel any of them. Um, I think it was just mentally exhausting and you're just uncomfortable. And when people check you, the nurses check you, they're like so nice, but it's so uncomfortable and it's just, oh, I did not care for that part. But, um, so that was the first full day and my older sister flew into town. My younger sister was there. My aunt was there. Like everybody was in that room and it was so beautiful. After that first day, it was now the second day. And I just remember my mom was the best partner um, for me at the time, she helped, she was like my partner. She would help me get up when I needed to go to the bathroom. And I remember feeling so much guilt because I think I had felt like I had let her down and like kind of straying off. And 
straying off from like how she raised me of like oh do not have sex until you're married all of this stuff and I just um I could tell I really disappointed her but I also could tell like she was so excited to be a grandma and she was gonna love this baby with all of her heart and so it was kind of like those emotions but she was so there anything I needed she was like she was right there with me she came to every single doctor's appointment and she was my partner the next 24 hours were even more draining more exhausting and I was seeing people who came in after me leave with their babies and I was like what the heck like what is going on and I think it was around that 48 hour mark where some nurses were saying okay well I think you're gonna have um have a c-section and I was even more scared for that I started crying immediately 20 minutes later my doctor walks in and was like no you are not having a c-section I don't know who told you that but they're wrong like you're young you're healthy we are going to have this baby vaginally and then I got like scared all over again because I think when like somebody tells you something you kind of like scared at first but then you like make your brain into like okay this is what's happening you prepare yourself and I think when she told me that, then I was like scared to have it vaginally again. It was like the craziest, but so what she did was she broke my water, which was the most painful part of my entire birth. Like I was just lying down, my mom was holding my hands and I'm just like, tears are just coming down my face because it just felt like somebody just like a cat up there just scratching. Oh, it was awful. I, I think I should not even, that's where I'm going to leave that. But um, after that happened, I could really feel my contractions and I asked for an epidural. So they got somebody in. I got my epidural. It did feel way better, but I wouldn't say my epidural, I think everybody's different, but my epidural didn't take away all my pain. And I would even like press the button for extra, but um I, and I think it was good that I it didn't take away all of the pain because I could just tell like I needed to push and like the contraction and like that cramp would hurt less when I push and my doctor had like just left the hospital because I think she didn't even think like after she broke my water I don't think she anticipated it was like 20 minutes after she broke it I think she thought I don't know, but she wasn't there and they were like rushing another doctor in that I had never met. But at that point, I literally didn't care. I was like, I don't care if a nurse delivers it. I'm sure they cared because they're like, <laughs> we're not trained or I'm sure they're trained. But um, I was like, I need to start pushing and only nurses were in the room. They're like, wait, can you wait? I'm like, no, I literally I could try, but I know there's just like no way. So um, then a nurse came in right as I started pushing and she or a doctor did I say nurse the doctor came in right as I started pushing and she was amazing and she was so nice um I felt super comfortable with her and she delivered the baby I had her at 5 45 p.m on a Thursday and it was the most beautiful experience of my life and as soon as she came into the world like time literally just stopped and everything felt right it was just the most peaceful feeling um, and her biological dad did show up as well and not for like the birth he wasn't there in the room as I was giving birth but he did um come into the room after i think what i remember most after giving birth was i've always been a little bit of a self-conscious person of my looks i had struggled with body dysmorphia for years and i got rhinoplasty done when i was 15 years old and i think when you like see like what i created inside of me it made me feel beautiful because I she was just beautiful and she was the most gorgeous tiny little baby ever and I just I think like for the first time I like felt genuine beauty in myself and like 
the beauty in the creation process and in women's bodies and like everything that it can do like I didn't know there was no manual on how to like this baby grow from like zero weeks to 40 like there's no your body just knows and does it and it's like such a miracle and it was genuinely the most beautiful time of my life and I will always be so thankful for that time and the people in my life and my family my friends everybody shortly after I got home um, I did get sent flowers anonymously and they were from Devin who is my now boyfriend who is the person that I went on a tinder date with um, but that will be in another video that was my pregnancy and birth story um, as much as I can remember since it, it has been around like six years but I am so grateful that I was able to share that with you guys and I hope that if you are going through something similar that you just keep hanging in there because it really is such a beautiful time and to just focus on you and your baby and know that everything's gonna be okay the universe has you just all cuddled up and yeah i just am so thankful i was able to share this experience and hope it helps somebody um and yeah so thanks so much for watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys later